That's it. The last show. The last weekly show. I'm done. QRT. SK. <laughs> I always wanted to make a clickbait video, so there it is. There you have it. But uh, in all seriousness, um, I am shutting down the weekly shows. But more on that at the end of this video. Um, behind me, Jupiter and Saturn. You might have saw it on Monday, maybe a few days before and after that. It's still in the sky, obviously. But yeah, take a telescope. Google some images. They are uh, very close, having a conjunction, if you will. So way cool stuff. I actually... Uh, I'm in the process of buying a telescope. I'm looking into it. But tonight we're going to be talking about websites. Some of these websites are off the beaten path, or maybe they're not on your radar. So here's a newer website I recently found. I will uh, drop all these links below in the video so you can obviously later go find them for yourself. But this here is uh, Batteries America. Uh, batteriesamerica.com or store.batteriesamerica.com. All sorts of good stuff. Uh, I particularly was looking for some batteries and a charger for a Kenwood. An old Kenwood THF6. And uh, one thing about these batteries is some of them don't have the little dots on the bottom. And I was looking for a drop-in charger as well as some batteries. They have some extended batteries. You can see here they have the drop-in charger. And on here they talk right about the two different chargers. You've got the, uh, for the batteries themselves, you pull it off the radio, you stick it in. Or if it's a newer battery, it has the little contacts on the bottom. So I was really impressed that I could find this. The price is, you know, 50 bucks. That's about right. So check these guys out. Along with this radio, I also just got a signal stick. That's this guy here. They've definitely been around for a while, but it's the first that I've uh, put them on my radios. So check them out. They have, they have the SMA for the female and the SMA for the male. Take a look at what your radio is. Um, they also support hamstudy.org. If you're not familiar with hamstudy.org, that is where you can take a test online. Great study materials as well as schedule your online test. All you need is some kind of um, video camera, a laptop, maybe even an iPad. Not sure about that. But yeah, if you need to get your license or upgrade, good stuff. Next up, check out this GitHub site. I'm fairly new to the GitHub, for that matter, the Raspberry Pi business. Uh, this is KM4 ACK Jason. Pretty sure all good hams are named Jason. He's really into the Raspberry Pi builds, captured a lot of great info, and uh, has put it all here. For that matter, has put the files for us to download and just copy and paste our way into a Linux world. Jason also runs a really great. Let me get back here. Jason also runs a really great YouTube channel lots of videos lots of stuff going on out there in tennessee so check him out km4 ack all right how about this one have you guys ever heard of ham info dot t e t r a n z e i'll put the <laughs> i'll put the link below this is a website where you can drop in your zip code and check out some hams so this is where I live. I live in 95687, Northern California. Whole lot of hams. This city's about 100,000 people. Let me look up my small town in Pennsylvania. 19547. Let's look at that. Definitely more spread out. But how about that? You could easily go send them some mail, drive past, introduce yourself. You might have a new best friend. Very cool website to see who's in your area. Next up, let's check out this Lightning website. I was not aware of this until another ham shared it to me. So uh, that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. But a few things to pick from. Overview map is what you can see. All the different lightning strikes. You can turn on sound. Drill down to North America. 
Ooh, got some action out there in Florida. And what it's doing is it's showing us with these targets where the lightning is. And then all throughout the country and the world, there are these sensors. And these sensors are picking it up and reporting it. So you can see how far away we're catching the reporting. And, you know, if you're on HF, you might not realize it, but, you know, lightning might be your worst enemy in trying to talk to someone. Uh, you also might see it there on your waterfall, or possibly you like to go to a web SDR. And as you look at a web SDR, you'll have these lines that shoot all the way across. Now, mind you, looking at a web SDR, it will be delayed, and I'm sure this can slightly be delayed. So if you want to try to line up when you hear a strike and when you, when you see a strike, you know, look at that solid one right there. Bet that was lightning. So that'll help you. If you're, uh, if you're wondering why conditions just stink, lightning could be in your way. And I did mention web SDR. So what is that? Gosh, I hope you know. WebSDR.org gives you a whole big list. Scroll down to the bottom, find your favorite. My two favorite, and not because I live out here in California, but I think they're some of the most uh, robust systems we have on this website, and I haven't looked at them all, is out here south of San Francisco. There's a station in Half Moon Bay, and then this other station up here in Utah. I'll leave those links below. How about that? annoying RF noise in your shack or maybe you touch things and you you get shocked <laughs> I don't I hope not but check out Palomar engineers a lot of different ferrites they have balans they have chokes toroids you name it they got it great store check these guys out they even have kits RFI solution kits so what are you trying to fix are you on a boat are you in an RV are you at home? This is us, ham radio dudes. HF, VHF, transceiver, the deluxe kit. 14 filters. Everything from your coax to your data to your power. Everything going into your radio choked out. That could be excessive, but that, that might be your solution. How about the FCC? Do you have a current login for that matter, uh, uh, you know, registered? I recently have been experimenting on this site. And so from the FCC.gov, as a ham radio dude, <laughs> uh, you're going to go to ULS, Universal. And so from here, you can file online. Now, you need your FRN. That's my FRN. And you might not have a password if you've never set this up before. So then you say, forgot your password. I recently had to do this because I thought I had a password, but come to find out I didn't have a security question. And why this is important is if you want to later uh, change, apply for a vanity call, uh, you know, send in your money. Anything you want to do with your license, you want to be familiar with this. So check this out. And I kind of bring this up because we heard from Jim from the ARL uh, last week's show. And I was thinking it's going to take several years to imply this $50 fee. But in actuality, I think it could be here before we, we kind of like it. I mean, we don't know that. One thing I didn't realize before is the FCC has had different fees throughout the years. Uh, I'll leave a link to this QRZ uh, right up here. You can search for it by uh, the title, A Short History of U.S. Amateur Radio License Fees. And so uh, this gentleman kind of did the work, dug it up, and put it all out here. But you can see there's various license fees uh, throughout the years, whether you're applying for a new license or you're um, applying for a vanity call. So... I have a feeling it's, it's probably coming back around as far as a, a fee, especially because there is an increase of amateur radio operators. There is. It's super exciting. And the FCC is thinking, 
Well, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but we can probably figure that out. Along the lines with call signs, vanity call signs, looking into things. I recently have been doing some research. It has piqued my interest. Check out this website, ae7q.com. So many tools. Uh, the first one over here, you could look for a 1x2 or a 2x1 and their availability. So your call sign region. So I'm here in six land. And I would go through here. Now, of course, you can go to QRZ FCC and you can search around. And it'll tell you if it's available, if it's expired. You go to the FCC database. But these guys here will uh, will give you the information. You can kind of surf around here to see what the 1x2, one 2x1. Two, two Obviously, you got to be an amateur extra. So that could be an incentive uh, to go for in the next year or so before they, they do apply. But check that out. Way cool tool. Same website. Go back here. You can learn stuff about your call sign. So over here, let me look up my call sign. That's me. That looks right. Almost appears that it's never been issued. Now that's not necessarily true because this database only goes back so far. <laughs> also in the top right, it's kind of small. And I tried looking for a tool more specific to this. But my call sign right now has a phonetic weight of 10 and a Morse code weight of 68. And that has to do with how easy and fast can you get it out. Whether you're speaking, obviously, or sending it in CW. So let me, uh, let me type up another call we know. Kevin and 6 VLF. And there we see Kevin has it. But, but there is two other people before him that had this call. And it talks about the dates. Going back to 1989. It also says pre ULS. So if you remember that ULS was the FCC's database we were just looking at. So this call sign goes way back uh, further. And, and the same with my call. They just don't have in, any information. And all sorts of things you can read about this. All right. What do I mean it's over? I wrote some notes so I could have my thoughts somewhat clear and, and kind of just letting you guys know what 2021 is going to look like for me. So let's start at the beginning. It was November 2019 when I first got involved with the Two Meter Crew weekly anti-net by live streaming it. As you can see here, this was uh, the first one. Uh, Ted was the uh, net controller and I thought it was going to be Carlos and I didn't have it ready to be switched around. And what you're seeing is a playlist. That playlist still exists on my YouTube channel. It will always be there. So check that out if you're ever curious about past two meter crew nets. But you know, in the beginning, I just wanted to be a fly on the wall and I wanted to stream it, kind of cruise around, barbecue, set the computer up, let it run. Um, from there, things kept growing and it kept involving into a full production show that, you know, both myself and others, we were putting it on quite regularly and with a lot of information material. And, you know, it became part-time job just about. So then in October 2020, I excused myself from the weekly anti-net as I wanted to focus on more in-depth content on my YouTube channel. I also wanted to pursue maybe five out of the hundred ideas Kevin and I had over the last two or so years, you know, as a ham, I think we probably talk about our ideas and projects way more than executing them. A few things that are uh, right on top of the short list to do is finishing up with the ham radio shop and, uh, you know, put together a few different products like these cables. And this one I just finished and we'll be sending it out to Sean shortly. So hang in there. Hopefully by next weekend it'll be there. But realistically, I'm not able to focus on some of these larger projects. Um, rebuild the shack, do Raspberry Pi, experiment a little bit. Because no matter what I do, I have to be ready to record, make a show, live stream every Wednesday. So it's extremely challenging um, to kind of go after some of these larger things with, with a weekly show. So this is my last Wednesday 
live show or a premiere show. But I think you will find the videos coming out in 2021 quite good. I'm going to be uh, focusing more on the quality than the quantity. Now, live shows are a ton of fun. And just because I'm not doing them weekly doesn't mean there won't be some live shows here and there. Also, this will give me a chance to hop on the two meter crew and say hello, you know, as, as, a, as a visitor, kind of hang out with them a little bit. And if you're not familiar where that takes place, that's over on Nick's channel. That's Northwest Ham Shack, a YouTube channel. And he's up there in Everett, Washington. So take a look, subscribe, and you more than likely will see me there in the next coming weeks. I think they're probably taking a break until the new year as well. So in the meantime, I might not be making weekly videos anymore, <clears throat> but go check out the uh, playlist. I've spent some time curating different playlists. I've got items such as coax and of course the two meter crew. I have some radio reviews on the air, getting active outside and, and so on. I don't know how well you know YouTube, but there is a bell right by the subscribe button. And this is true for every YouTuber you're into. If you hit that bell, it'll push a notification to your, uh, to your flat phone, to your smartphone. And then you'll be able to keep track of when they release the video or maybe they, uh, they went live. So I want to thank everyone for coming along on this ride. Uh, I couldn't have done all of these videos without the help of all of my friends. So many of my videos is of other people and sharing their experience or their knowledge. And I'm going to keep that up. There's going to be some cool stuff coming up for 2021. Very excited. Well, I'll see you next year. 7-3.